The Black Sea is a vital lifeline for several countries, being their only gateway to a global maritime trade. Despite the ongoing conflict in Ukraine, the country has exported around 15 million metric tons of cargo since August via its Black Sea corridor. Kiev had launched what it calls a temporary humanitarian corridor after Moscow withdrew from a 2022 Black Sea grain deal brokered by the UN and Turkey. Before Russia launched its attack on Ukraine in February 2022, the nation exported around 6 million tons of food per month through the Black Sea. In a boost to securing the strategic body of water, Turkey, Romania and Bulgaria inked a deal on demining the Black Sea. Since the fighting broke out in 2022, the Russian Navy has mined Ukraine's coastline, but some of those explosives have drifted into the waters of NATO countries. The deal is also expected to secure Kiev's grain exports along the Romanian and Bulgarian coasts. Turkey and Ukraine are also set to ratify a free trade agreement they signed two years ago, which is expected to heavily boost their already $8 billion trade relationship. And to get a better understanding of relations between Turkey and Ukraine, the ongoing conflict and Black Sea security, joining me now from Ankara is Vesil Bodnar. He is the Ukrainian ambassador to Turkey. Mr. Botnar, thank you very much for joining me on Straight Talk. So, the ambassador, the war in Ukraine is nearing two-year mark. What's the latest on both the diplomatic front and on the ground? Thank you very much for interest to Ukraine. Uh, today, we are continue fighting on the ground. I mean, our armed forces, now people are fighting for our independence. From the other side, we are looking for peace. And uh, the peace formula of President Zelensky is the background for uh, settlement in the peaceful way. And uh, just recently in Davos, there was a meeting of national security advisors discussing the possibilities of finding the peace on the ground of common consensus. So uh, we are now looking for the most active uh, uh, participation of Turkey in this regard, in particular with related to global security, uh, global uh, security issues and uh, global food security, which is the main dimension of our cooperation. So the Ukrainian uh, president's proposal included calls for Russia to pull its uh, troops back and face up to war crimes. How viable is this since Russia dismissed it outright? So that's not about the Russia to decide because they already committed crimes and they already invaded Ukraine. So they should be punished. Uh, in the legal way, otherwise it will be a continuation of uh, war endlessly. Uh, here we are also appealing to the international community to work for stopping these criminal activities because Russia was for a long period of time not punished for their crimes in other countries like Georgia, Syria or even inside Russia in uh, Chechnya. So now it's the time to stop Russian aggression, to work uh, solidly and to work to, for the future peace, not creating new problems for the global uh, security and also creating a system which will be more adequate than UN today for uh, responding to the global challenges like uh, Russian aggression or aggressive behavior of other countries. So are your country still of the view that the war can only end through the negotiations table and under which circumstances is Ukraine ready to negotiate Russian troop withdrawal? Uh, we are now standing on our soil, defending our people and uh, our land from the aggressor countries. So they are on our soil, not we are occupying their territories. So that's the most important story for our independence. And uh, that is the opportunity to uh, not to allow this war with spread to the other countries of Europe and uh, to consolidate the tension. The other point of view is uh, we are looking for peace with other peace-loving countries, not with the aggressors. We believe that uh, including Russia into negotiations with the Spears formula could be also at the end of the process, when we could elaborate the position together with the international community. And we see only the growing number of countries which are joining us in this uh, search for peace. But is your country still getting the military support it needs from its uh, friends, or are things moving rather slowly nowadays? Yes, it's different from the, uh, the, the best periods we have previously, but uh, still we are keeping lines. We are continually to um, fight a symmetrical war with the superior forces, and we are using what we can, and we are grateful to uh, all the countries who are supplying to us anything uh, which is necessary for the defense. Uh, we wish it should be better, but uh, now we are using what we can. And uh, as, as some of the Ukrainian soldiers say that we will fight till the end despite of the 
uh, absence of weapons or, or ammunition because we have no way to turn back. That's, the, that's our soil and uh, behind the soldiers there are families and, and civilians which yes. should be protected in any way. So is the latest exchange of prisoners between Ukraine and Russia, uh, which is the largest since the beginning of uh, the war, a signal that, uh, that uh, both sides want to engage diplomatically? Sure, it's the only diplomatic way to exchange prisoners. And recent exchange of more than 200 of uh, Ukrainian soldiers was a big success. So we continue to work with our international partners, uh, also uh, including Turkey, which is having good experiences in this exchange of prisoners uh, in, in, in last years. So uh, we are engaged all our partners to be uh, on our side and help us with, the, with this dimension because, yes, as you know, the aggressor country, Russia, re was rejecting for some period of time to, to continue this practice and not to exchange because they are practically not interested in their prisoners of war, which were staying in Ukraine. But when we look at our soldiers uh, who have been in captivity, they, they look very terrible and the behavior and the attitude to our soldiers is very terrible. So we need also not only to exchange prisoners, but also to check their, uh, stays, uh, where they are staying and what the conditions uh, of them. So we also attract different dimensions like international organizations, ombudsman level and other uh, possible uh, assistance in this regard. Uh, and we will be grateful for any help uh, which is which you are asking for. So um, NATO members, uh, Turkey, Bulgaria and Romania have recently signed an agreement on demining the uh, Black Sea to ensure safe waters. What's the significance of this uh, deal and does it bear any risks? What do you think? From my point of view, it's a very positive initiative uh, because as you know, uh, today we are sending ships uh, from Ukrainian ports. We are territorial waters of Romania, Bulgaria and Turkey. And uh, we need this initiative to, uh, for, for the ships to feel themselves much more safer in the area of Black Sea, in particularly in the western and northern part. Uh, actually, we would be happy also to join this initiative when time will come. And uh, we have assurances, and it was publicly announced, that the time will come we will join this initiative. Uh, we believe that it will also uh, help to, to create more secure situation uh, in this part of the world and uh, also Within this uh, NATO regional dimension, it will be also helpful for uh, reaching more stability and security uh, in, the, in, our, in our region of common neighborhood. And uh, for sure, we believe that uh, maybe uh, later on we will speak also about uh, extending this agreement also to Georgia, which is a NATO partner, and, and Ukraine as a NATO partner, and maybe future member of uh, the North Atlantic Organization. So, uh, Mr. Ambassador, a free trade agreement uh, uh, between Turkey and Ukraine will soon uh, take effect. How will that add a momentum to the two country relations and mitigate, mitigate the negative impacts on the Ukrainian economy due to Russia's attacks? I mean, what kind of an economic benefits are you expecting from this deal? FTA is the great deal. We signed it before the war and we are now in the finalization of the process of ratification. It opened up gates for uh, many uh, trade opportunities for Turkish companies and for Ukrainian companies. It is very essential in the sense of uh, reconstruction of Ukraine in post-war period or even today in the, uh, related to critical infrastructure. So we are now preparing a couple of meetings and summits related to these reconstructions and engagement of Turkish companies which could benefit from, uh, from this uh, big project. As well, uh, we, we are opening markets for our products for both countries, and it's, it's an equal attitude. It shows how we are treating each other and uh, how much opportunities we are creating for each other. And also uh, for Ukraine, it will be hugely necessary to uh, use the Turkish experience of uh, creating organized industrial zones, or we are calling it industrial parks, which are also essential for uh, reconstruction of Ukrainian industry and for restoring the capabilities um, for stronger Ukrainian industries and also for Turkish companies to establish their branches in Ukraine and also to sell their products to the European market. Because it's uh, logistically, it's much more easy and uh, also it will be open uh, up in new chapters of the EU-Ukrainian uh, negotiation talks, also not only on the FTA, but also on the future membership. So, uh, just la last question, Mr. Ambassador. What do you uh, make of Turkey's uh, position nowadays? Because on one hand, it supports Ukraine militarily and politically, but also maintains close relations uh, with Moscow on the other. 
Uh, we are considered Turkey as a strategic partner, and uh, in, in the nearest weeks we will celebrate the 10th anniversary of our strategic partnership. On the 3rd of uh, February we will have a uh, next anniversary of establishment diplomatic relations between our countries. Uh, it is very significant dates, and we feel our strategic partnerships with the very practical substance. We understand that Turkey has their own interest, and they continue to work with the countries they decided to. Uh, so if there are any sensitive issues we are discussing in our bilateral levels, in the friendly manner, in an open manner, so we have a very fruitful dialogue between our presidents, it's constructed trust, it's constructed a very close ties between our nations, and we believe in, in our very strong future. We are having very close ties in the defense industries, which are actually making our country stronger. We are also opening up our possibilities for the business and for the ordinary people to travel to each other, and after the war, I believe we will restore all the air connections uh, which exist before the war even more. And uh, we have a lot of opportunities. We need just to use them properly to help each other and uh, to create more safe zones for, for ourselves and for the region. And uh, we are bearing responsibility not only for region, but also for the global, for example, food security, which yes. is uh, one of our key points of uh, responsibility among the uh, global and globally. All right, Mr. Ambassador, unfortunately, we'll have to leave it here. Thank you very much for joining me on Straight Talk.